Dear friends, for a few months now I've had the opportunity to phone Ariel from time to time. Now we have agreed that I will record the calls and publish them on our channel. So this is a world premiere. I'm always impressed and humbled by the wisdom and depth with which Ariel speaks to me. We talk about his routines, his current certification as a coach and the deeper meaning of his life so far. This is hopefully the beginning of a live series with Ariel himself. Stay tuned and look forward what he has to tell us. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Constantin, hello. Hello. Hi, Ariel. I'm all aware. So no, finally we, we we found together. That's that's good to good to hear. You know. Yes, I tell you all things in due time. You know, I learned in this place not to try to rush it. Don't worry, and just be patient. So tell me a little bit. How 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 are you? What, what's what's going on in your world at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, working on my spiritual evolution continually. You know, mm. that's what I do most morning. You know, I try to maintain a routine. I get up. I. Um, do my necessities in terms of my hygiene. I fix my oatmeal and uh, I meditate for 30 minutes, eat my oatmeal and I listen to some edifying music and do some particulars that may have related from yesterday that I need to do. I'm a facilitator of the nine o'clock NA meeting here within the dormitory. So I usually do the paperwork related to that once I'm finished with my meditation, eat my oatmeal and get that out of the way. And then like I've just finished my workout, but I tailored it today so I can get to the phone at seven o'clock. So I gotta get to the phone. Gotta get to the phone. So yes, every other day I do my workout. Mm -hmm. uh, when they open the door at six thirty generally or somewhere there about and then, you know, it's usually shower, nine o'clock in a meeting, then whatever else whatever else the day entails. It could be a class in the afternoon. Like we just got our certification for the peer recovery coach. So mm -hmm. um, that just happened two days ago. Remember you I was telling you I was studying up for Yeah. Uh, the test that we had, we were going to a class, and uh, that has come and gone. And uh, yes, we passed the test, or I in particular. And uh, yes, I'm a certified peer recovery coach, so that's just another thing I've yeah. added to my repertoire, if you could say. And uh, yes, that's fantastic. That's my mother's will. Congratulations! Yes. Wow, super! Yes, yes, thank you. Very good. Yes, sir. You know, um, I, I talk. You, you know, I, I mentioned to you. I talked with with Rory again, and he liked the idea a lot that that you that you uh, plan to to work as a recovery coach um, after your your release. He thought that that's something they can promote very well. Especially if, if you have the vision or the or the, you feel you feel the, the mission to to go back and, and help others who are in a similar situation as you are, and uh, and then to help them to, to get their life somehow right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's something. Sir, I um, I'm certainly going to have to get a occupation immediately upon release, and um, that is something I can be seated right into. Uh, relatively soon after being released and certainly having the exper experiential knowledge as well as the um, academic, the book, the learn knowledge. So yes, and uh, I have a couple of um, resources as well as a uh, resource here on site that is willing to uh, help me out in that vein. So yeah, I'm going to, um, that's mm -hmm. something to look into. So yeah, yeah. Cert certification. Tell me, Ariel, you, you have mentioned the last time after you have uh, now um, reached a certification as a certified coach, you will try to do the next level. What is the next level in this education? The next level is, is, is level two, basically. You need 500 hours of supervised time in the field, essentially. So they don't know how they're going to log out hours or supervise the hours, whether they're going to be grandfathered in, because I've been working as a peer recovery coach. That's been my job for a number of months now whether they would grandfather the hours in relative to the time passed or whether they're going to create a curriculum in which we have to be supplied from this point forward. So um, that's still in the works. But once we do the 500 hours, we immediately go to level two. And then once you reach level two, your certification never lapses. You just have to renew it with continued education units um, every couple of years. Mm -hmm. Once you do those units, your certification is back valid. So you okay. never have to retest again. So, so yes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. We just need to get the level two. So, so, so I okay. doubt them found mm-hmm. out search a lot. Okay. Okay, that's good. So this means uh, by by the work, by doing the work, five, having 500 hours of practice, you you get you get the next level, automatically. Yes, sir. Ah, okay, fantastic. And then, uh, as a supervisor, you would be able also to teach other or to 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 train or to give feedback to other coaches, right? Not necessarily other coaches, but it just states my my certification relative to an organization and relative to employment. We, as in terms of other coaches, those who haven't had 500 hours, certainly we would be in a team working together with other coaches and we would have supervisors above us at uh, various levels. Someone who may be a, a counselor, someone may, who may be a, a clinician, so they may be uh, levels above us administratively, but we will uh, be working together as a team. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And all right, how many minutes are we in now? I think five, five minutes, seven minutes. So we have some time in this call. Um, and what would be interested for, for interesting for me, Ariel, you, you last time you, you told me so very nice about the method of what you're doing. Can you repeat this once again for me? The, the method? Yeah. What are the steps of, of the coaching? Of, of, of being a peer recovery coach? Yeah. Our responsibilities basically are to, I'm reading officially off our uh, duties and responsibilities. Then I'll give you more, I'll fill it in. It's to be a positive role model for peers. It's to demonstrate and model appropriate coping techniques to sustain recovery. It's to assist peers as requested with identifying obstacles in their recovery and provide guidance for working through these obstacles. It's to conduct and document daily check-ins with peers on the unit. It's to motivate peers to engage in recovery oriented activities, facilitate the peer support groups, both required and volunteer in housing units, maintain attendance sheets for all groups facilitated on the treatment unit, co-facilitate groups with the ARS counselors if asked to do so, work as part of a team with other recovery mentors to increase productivity on the unit, to attend all meetings and trainings as supervised by, as scheduled by supervisors, to complete all documentation and assignments as required by our supervisor, participate in monthly individual evaluations on job performance with the supervisor, and comply with all the guidelines and requirements as stated per the RWI participation handbook. Now, let me tell you, mm-hmm. break all of it down. Basically, we are in housing unit, I don't want to say counselors, but support members. We are the Adjunct, we are the satellite for the ARS, the addiction recovery specialist. We help them with the men who live amongst us, and we help them to facilitate their recovery. We try to model the behavior of what recovery looks like. If we see them in crisis, their active addiction, we attempt to try to offer them some means of off ramp to center them, to bring them back to their um, recovery, mm-hmm. and um, we just try to. Um, help me to sustain themselves from addiction, as well as facilitate the various electives, the classes that are running on the unit, and hold the uh, daily NA meetings for other groups that happen within the unit. So that is our job here within the housing unit we stay in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and... So that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so th- this, this is... <laughs> Maybe can you can you tell me a little bit about um, let's say from the from the point of view of of your of your of the clients you know, of of these people what 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 are the principles what, how what do do you teach them so that they can start to with their recovery? Okay, we first of all we have there there are very steps within NA. Essentially, we teach them that you are in charge and that you can do this. You can recover. That's the point of us following behavior. We try to show them that it is possible for them to change our lives, to change their lives, and that um, in spite of them being powerless over their addiction and their lives being unmanageable, that it is possible for us to conquer the disease of what one would call addiction and that for us to not blame other people and places and things for our addiction, we need to face the problems of how we're feeling about those things. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the tools that we teach them is basically um, working steps, going through the 12 steps of NA, 
um, there are 12 various steps that one has to work through, and working through those steps allow them to identify various character defects and various shortcomings in their lives and attempt to try to remove them mm-hmm. uh, because the addiction is not the problem. It's the the underlying problem of the addiction. So once we address that by working the steps, we tell them you need to go to meetings, NA meetings, to other members, people who are doing the same, so you can understand that you are not an outlier or you're not alone, mm-hmm. that there are other people like you, and that your story is similar to other people, and that in spite of the shame and guilt one may feel by being addicted, letting other people down, and having constant failures, that there are many of us like that, and that we are all addicts, mm-hmm. which is various stages and levels of our addiction. So... Um, we get them to let them know that they're in charge and they need to work the steps. They need to go to meetings. They need to find a sponsor, someone that they can talk to one-on-one potentially and further continue the steps with to combine in. To, to be. You have one minute remaining. The sponsor is a confidant, someone who helps guide them personally one-on-one outside of the NA meetings. And um, what else do we do? That's another step I missed. <laughs> okay. uh, oh yes, they need to take their classes, other classes, electives that involve in obtaining new skills, yeah. uh, being involved in activities that are not related around you know substance use. Okay. So let open your mind up, and put some new stuff in. Okay, great. I will call you back. When you yeah, call can me. you call me back again? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. So sure, yes, yeah. those are some of the things that we do. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that, that's the steps. Okay. And maybe you can tell me a little bit about the 12 steps. That's very, sounds very interesting. Um, but let's do it yes, in the I next can. call. Let's do it in the next call. When I call, yes, sir. Yeah. I will. Yes. They are the classic uh, steps of, of NA. In fact, they use them in various uh, A's, you know, anonymous groups. And they're in the- Thank you for using GTL. So this is our situation with Ariel. Um, we have now this fantastic opportunity to talk on, on phone and, and it was very hard touching for me the first time when we talked. But we have only 15 minutes slots and then we will we are cut off and now I just wait for the next call. I hope he's coming in. Um, my problem is I can't call Ariel back. So if I don't get this call, it's it's gone and I have to wait. We have to wait for another week or whatever when, when there's the next opportunity. But it works. So finally, here he is. Hello, this is a prepaid call from an inmate at the Indiana State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse, your current balance is $44.05. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Good. Yeah, here you are. What a miracle. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> <Of> technology. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so great. My, I mean, we can complain about the system. It's, you know, in the 15 minutes slots. But finally, you know, you're sitting in Indiana and I'm sitting in Berlin and, and we talk. And it's so fantastic. And I'm so touched yeah. every time if I, if I hear your voice. It's amazing. You know, I think we can literally be across the pond, you know, and have a communication. Yeah. A connection. It's a, yeah, it is a, a wonder. Mm, so, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, uh, my complaints have decreased over the years. Mm-hmm. Recognition that you have to accept life on life's terms. And in regards of our, our desires or wishes, they may come to pass, they may not. So yeah. oh, they can call us in bounds of grief, or we can just be um, content with it and allow things to play out as they will, because they ultimately will. Mm. And you will see if, if you are in, in, the, in, in the free world, this principle remains, you know. It's, 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 yes, that's sir. life. You, you can't control life. You know, that, that things come, things go, things happen, don't happen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Um, uh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> mm. uh, some profound in my life. I'm, I'm still coming to accept. Let mm-hmm. it go. Let it go. And just let it come. You know, and, and some uh, uh, theological doctrine says let go and let God, you know, but I see there's profound philosophy. You just have to go along to get along oftentimes. Of course, you can control your reaction to things that happen, but sometimes you have no control over things that happen. All you have is your reaction to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And 
that, 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 that's, I'm that's, still learning. yeah, yes, we are all <laughs> learning, all of us. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as it relates to the 12 steps mm -hmm. that we have in NA, um, most of them, or seven of the 12 steps, speak, speak about a higher power. Not, and NA says it's not a religious uh, undertaking, it's a spiritual undertaking, and that we need to evolve and get in touch with our higher selves, essentially, because our lower selves is a is a cunning enemy of death, so to speak, and that it does things to our detriment. But to the extent we shine that self-examination light on ourselves, we begin to evolve, and we begin to see that we're something other than what we have believed ourselves to be, and the thing that we were believing in was really an illusion. Hmm. When we get in touch with our true self, we become better people because we start to see that ourselves as a miraculous, incredible, marvelous entity. Fantastic. Uh, contrary yeah. to popular. Hmm. Yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I believe, uh, my opinion, that we are God. Hmm. Uh, we're not the God, but yet, you know, some theological doctor says God is everything, everywhere and all knowing. Well, if that's the case, then I have to be it. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, yeah. It is the manifestation through me. So, in coming and knowing that, it's very powerful, it's very inspiring, and it's very reassuring. Knowing that, hey, I'm God, and to think that I've been not stewarding over this precious gift that I'm in possession of, be it my body, like, oh, I need to step it up. You know, I need to reorientate. I need to rethink this. You know, I need to revise some things. And yes. Um, incredibly inspiring so yes it has changed and helped shape my attitude over the years and given me strength to persevere through all of this travail yeah, it is my doing I tell guys all the time I said my energy is my energy you know? no tell me did, I didn't get that my energy is my energy yes in God my energy is my, my vitality my strength my energy as in the letter My energy is my energy, as in the letter. You know, you know we got energy, E N E R G Y. My energy is my inner, I N N E R G. My ah. energy is my inner G. Ah, okay. That's that's a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, as it relates to the 12 steps, I was saying that tw seven of the 12 speaks about a higher power. I was trying to disconnect the higher power from, you know, a religious aspect to speak about it being spirit. You know, just wanted to explain spirit. I tell them all the time that not everybody has a religion, but everybody has a spirit. Yeah. You know, our soul is imbued with a spirit, which is, allows us to be able to function in this world of creation, this, you know, this manifested world. But um, our, our number one step tells us that we need to admit that we are powerless over our addiction and that our lives have become unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And our number two step tells us that we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Number three is uh, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Four is we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five tells us we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six tells us that we are entirely we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven instructs us to humbly ask Him to remove our shortcomings, mm. and then we are instructed to in eight to make a list of all purpose we had harmed and become willing to make amends to them all. Nine is related to eight in that we may direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And after that, we continue to take, number 10, is we continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So this is an ongoing thing. And 11 tells us we saw through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for his knowledge of our will for us, for of his, excuse me. We saw through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. 12, the last one, says us having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to addicts and to practice these mm -hmm. principles in all our affairs. Mm -hmm. says, this may sound like a big order and we can't do it all at once, but we didn't become addicted in one day. So remember, easy does it. You know, it's a process. Mm -hmm. you know, 
<laughs> you have to stop osmosis. It's a gradual process that we have to go through to be able to maintain our recovery from substance use. <clears throat> recovery from substitute? Substance. 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 Yeah, substance. S-U-B-S-T-A-N-C. Yeah. Yeah. Substance. Yeah, I, I got it. I got uh, it. Yeah. That's the word rather than, than, than say substance abuse. Mm-hmm. But if you put A in the front of use, U-S-E, you got the word abuse anyway. Substance abuse. I'd rather use substance use mm-hmm. rather than substance. And I found it interesting. <laughs> I like words. Mm-hmm. English language is quite interesting. Um, Abuse, A B U S E, the word ab in A B, Egyptian is heart. It stands for the heart. Mm-hmm. So when you put use on it, W U S E, and you think about abuse, you're using your heart, you know. And when you abuse somebody, they really feel it. They feel it deep down, you know, short of it being physical abuse. You know, you can have verbal abuse and someone, you know, feels some type of way and it affects them mentally, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So when you use the heart, you, you abused it, you know. It's like, oh wow, that's interesting. The ab use, the heart use. So mm-hmm. yeah, you are. So um, just the word, I, I am mm-hmm. able to come to a different understanding about. Okay, abuse. so it's like, kind of like a, a re- reframing, a re- reframing of the whole thing. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, sir. Yeah, and it it, it kind of removes removes the stigma and label substance abuse. Versus substance use sounds different mm-hmm. in terms of its contextualization. When you tell, hey, this, you know, he has a problem with substance use versus he has a problem with substance abuse, like it sounds different mm-hmm. as relating to the person, almost like you're tearing them down or you uh, indicting them or uh, you're using pejorative or words that are ostracizing towards someone saying hey, he's a substance abuser or he's a substance user. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. Ariel, um, did did you this, yes. this twelve steps? Um, is this part of this program, or is it also, or is it something like you, you, your philosophy, and and you you put it into this program? No, no, the twelve steps are part of the program. Part of the in program. The literature, it comes out of the book, actually. Yes, and mm-hmm. this is something that encourages the people who get into the program to work these things. It's like almost like the theology of NA of mm-hmm. Narcotics Anonymous. Mm-hmm. To work the steps is to shine a light upon yourself because you're doing things that make you think about your behavior because you want to change what you've done. Let's say you have a disease, but it's a thinking disease. You've brought yourself into substance use. You can think yourself out of it, but you have to take in some new knowledge. You have to be open. You have to be honest. And you have to be willing to do this. You have mm-hmm. to open not only yourself, but your, your ideology because the things that worked in the things you've done in the past haven't worked but to open your mind you let some things out and you can let some things in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay um you, you you said before that that um the the main main let's say goal or the first one of the first goals is to understand that the the substance substance addiction is not the, the problem the real problem but the real problem is something underlying an underlying problem Is there, is it like a situation-based problems? Like um, you, you, somebody had a bad, bad experience in his childhood or things like that? Or would you say it's a ch- something generalized, like um, people are cut off the source? Because I, I feel that, that you talk a lot, lot about the source, you know, the source God in you or, or whatever, you, how you ever you call it, or the energy flowing through you. So this is like a source, a, a genuine source that is within each human being. And, and is it something like that? Is that the underlying problem that people are cut off this? Or how would you describe it? Ultimately, I would describe it just as you just said. And, mm. the, and the exact manner that you approached it. One, you said, is there some type of childhood of trauma or is one cut off from the source? I would say the primary reason that we are cut off from the source, however you contextualize it, however you relate to it, or however you define it, our ultimate source that beats all of our heart, that heart that supplies us with the air that allows us to sustain ourselves, we are disconnected from that. You know, I, I enable, I liken it to a child being uh, not able to have contact with his mother's breath 
initially, and it doesn't have any baby formula, but the sustenance is coming from its mother's breast, and it's not able to feed on that breast. It's not being milked. It's not being nourished. It's not being cultivated. Same way with us being from our initial spiritual source, our source of sustaining, our source of, 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 of cultivation, we've cut off from. Of. We don't even recognize. We take it for granted that we're not breathing air that we have anything to do with. We're not. Uh, we didn't make these bodies. We think we came from our mothers and fathers, but we didn't. They they brought us into this world through their portal. So the source that has allowed those things to happen, mm-hmm. we become disconnected from. And I, I, I also like it too. If you ever seen the Sistine Chapel with uh, uh, the fingers pointing to each other, mm-hmm. and there's a small space between the fingers and there's no connection there. And we're trying to make those fingers contact back to each other. That small distance between those two fingers is the distance between life and death or the distance between, uh, colloquially, heaven and hell mm-hmm. from being at the highest of our high or the lowest of our lows. Because I see our physical body as being the furthest manifestation from the creative source as possible. To the extent that we're able to evolve ourselves back up, we can get back to where we initially came from, but out of these bodies, because these are not us. It's just housed the true us. So being cut off from that source that enlivens these bodies is the first thing. The trauma, secondly, is something else. All of us have trauma. Everybody, as you said, out in the world, people go through massive traumas. They're not in prison. They don't do things that are aberrant. They don't create, they don't commit quote-unquote crimes. They're not put in prison, but they still are suffering, and they still are maybe just terrible people because of who they are, because of things that we have gone through, the trauma that we've experienced, and it shaped us, our personalities and our characteristics. And we have driven those things or those personalities and characteristics for as though they were us. You have one. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. Minute remaining. We think those they, these things are a real person. Our characteristics and our personality are really us, but it's not. Mm-hmm. We are really the creative source, which is everything, all things, and it's all knowing. So, yes. Yeah. Beautiful said. I don't want to talk you, too much. I, I, Ariel, you're a great philosopher, really. It's fantastic how you put things. I really like it. I really, it's really, really good digging deep and uh, hitting the right tones. Yes, sir. Um, so question is, um, sh- shall we have another call or shall we t- close it and then do some, some two, three words about organization or whatever? What do you think? Um, about what? About like how to go on with the book and so on. And I can, I can call back. Okay. Then let's have a third one today. Okay. If it's fine for you. Okay. Okay. Great. Yes, sir. If, if you have time, you have time. Thank you for using GTL. Here is gone again, but we can do a third t- third call today. That's good to know. Fantastic. Waiting for the next call. Isn't that exciting? I, I'm really. It's it's. Isn't isn't it really wise what Ariel tells us? Tells me. Tells all of us. Hello, this is a prepaid call from an inmate at the Indiana State yeah. Prison. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse this call, hang up or press one. To prevent calls from this facility, your current balance is $40.78. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Yeah, here here we are back okay. again. Okay, fantastic. Yes, sir. Wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what I what I wanted to ask you is talk a little bit about the book. Um, so the the one thing is I wanted to ask you: Could will you send or could you send additional um, material, or is it is it all what you have at the moment? Yes, I could. And mm-hmm. I was asking if, dude, are we going to just have the book just about what is the parameters of the book? Is it just something that I produce? Is there a, a, a through line or ideal about where we want to go with the book and I need to write some more? Or is it just the things that are already produced? 
and they will just excise or exact some things out of uh, or compile something from the writings that I currently have. Um, my idea was, I, I sent you once this plot, this idea about like kind of a, how would be the chapters of, of this book. It's, and it's like a journey, you know, like, a, like a hero's journey a little bit. And what my idea is that we, I try to somehow fuse the material together with, with our talks. Yeah, so that okay. that we somehow um, yeah create a good good storyline that 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 it's somehow yeah that that's that's good to follow for everybody. So it means if if I once have have all all the materials you you have, I, I I already started sorting them already. You know, put them together into certain chapters. Okay. And okay. if I have all all of it, then I see okay, what's what what do we have already? So, for example, you, you already have a long 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 many pages about your childhood and so on. So that's already great to have something here. Uh -huh. But maybe it would be interesting then for, for some gaps to talk about it, to, to talk and you uh -huh. tell me a little bit and and I record this and then we can I can I can put this into into print and okay. then we have have uh, further material. Yeah. Additional information. Yes. Yeah, additional okay. information. Yes. And on the other side, we, we, we pr produce already some content, something we can use for, for whatever to, to, to put it on the YouTube channel or, you know, so, so I think people would be interested in hearing you, your, per, your personal voice, hearing your thoughts in the way you express yes. things. And I think it's very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need to do um, to continue to, you know, put content up for your podcast. Yeah. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, now, for, fortunately, now we are we are, we are set up. We have to you know the recording works, and so that's that's fantastic. So we can do this. And um, the only thing is, Ariel, is what I'm wondering about is how we can how we can, let's say. Put the book really together finally because you have all your material you send it to me we have all the recordings but then it has to be put together somehow yeah and i can't i, I can yes. do some work here but my question mm -hmm. is how can we manage it if because i think you need to read it then you know you, you need to see over overlook it yeah and it and, needs to be edited yeah, yeah as to, you said yes need. yeah so um um, we'll figure it out. Let's just go forward and um, the universe will bring it together. I'm yeah. a firm believer of that. Mm. When we have desire, wishes, and we put it out like a Wi-Fi call. Right yeah. now, we're not talking on a hard line. We're probably talking on something that's going up to a satellite and being beamed down just through uh, frequencies in the air. You know, it's a vibration, essentially. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I thought prayers are the same thing. When we put them out there and it goes to their creative source, The answers being back to us. We just need to receive it. So I firmly mm -hmm. believe that that we need to have it um, uh, edited, put the compiled and disseminated between you and I, or so I, so I can read it. It's going to happen. I have no doubt about this. You know, yeah. I just don't. <laughs> I have no doubt. We will figure it out. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's good. A good. That's a that's a right right um, approach. I like it. That's good. So maybe one. Okay, then let's let's just go forward. Um, I, I will start asking you questions um, in, in our calls about things where, where I think it would be interesting. So like today, I, okay. I, you told me something about about your your uh, coach certification and what is the work and what are the principles and so on. Okay. And for yeah, example, sure. next time would be would be of interest. Uh, I would like to understand how how does it work. In, in, in sit being in a prison and, and at, at that time you maybe have been even in, in, in single single cell um, compartments and mm -hmm. how, how does it work to, to, to do a study? How does it work? Do you have do you have an online how course? Work to be what? Hmm? Tell me. How does it work to be yeah, to study in a single cell and Oh, to study? Yeah, to, because you made, you know, you, you, okay. you made some yeah. degrees. You made an, an, an bachelor yeah. and even a master degree. So how do you do that? That's so interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. I understand. So I'm going to call back Sunday at two. Yeah. So be ready. Yeah, okay. I will be ready, yeah. Okay, yes, so that, that was these things. And, and the other is, as, as I told you, if, if any possible 
if you can try to give me if, if I ask you or something on the email system like can you adjust to this to this date or whatever um, that you give me a short feedback if it's possible I know sometimes the system doesn't oh, work oh, hmm? say again for example if I if I send you a message about uh, the, the time yeah. or the date or, or whatever um, that you give me a short uh -huh. short even if just I okay. know understand okay you got the email or something like that so that yeah. I know okay Ariel so is, is informed I I've sent you a response to the email the thing about this system is unfortunately it doesn't work like text work on the street you send me a text and I get it and I'm just up to me whether I read it these people are hold the text day two three you may get it for a week you know <laughs> yeah that's a problem yeah and this it's is terrible. why it, yeah, yeah I know and that, but this is why why it's so important that you just give a short reply and don't worry about the credits also just a short reply because then I see okay now he got it you know Okay. Then I, okay. I understand. I know okay, you, you got the message. Yeah. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. I will be diligent. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, know, I know you do your best. You do really, really good. I mean, in, in this uh, circumstances, and you, you, you do so, so good work. Really, you deserve it so much that you, that you get free now. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. I feel incredible. I feel like I won a billion dollars in the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> a billion dollars. Hmm. Oh my goodness! Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Would you say so, having these conversations? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, tell me, tell me. No, I'm saying having these conversations with you and the topics that we're broaching and the ideals that we're proposing just only gives me, you know, just lets me know it's, it's this too shall pass and it's going to be all right, you know, mm. in spite of everything that has happened previously up to this point. Okay, I didn't come this far just to come this far. Oh well. You know, you have to be tried, tried and tested in the fire. The cauldron, you know, is the thing that refines things, you know. Gold doesn't come out of the ground in, the, in its form, you know. It, it has to be worked on, you know, even diamonds, mm -hmm. you know. So you got to work to get it. But once you get it and you refine it, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we cherish it. And people look upon it with great awe and reverence. And mm -hmm. it, it holds a lot of monetary value in this world. Mm -hmm. But in its initial state, from this mineral state in the earth it's like oh man mm. what I want. you know what what yeah. picture is coming up in my mind now is i don't know whether you believe in in reincarnation but, but absolutely yeah okay so if you look <laughs> at that i i can imagine you know the one would be your past life um was like in a way that that you have get got punished now you know somehow it could uh -huh. be the one pay, one yeah, way, sir. but it could yeah, be sir. also that I I know it's it's high. I don't I don't know how you like it, but it could be also like a reward because Absolutely. you I think you have developed in a speed a kind of speed of light you know, and did during this yes, lifetime. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, and and the very thing you said, uh, searching out the information and literature relative to reincarnation has helped me to evolve spiritually and to understand, you know, this is not just about life and death. Life is attended on death and death is attended on life. They go together. They're like two sides of the same coin. One just can't be, you just can't have all life or there will be no death. And you just can't have death or there will be no life. So they have to go together. It's like soil and planting the seed. You need the soil for the seed and you need the seed for the soil or you would just have one or the other. And they would do no good apart from each other. The soil is made to grow things and the seed is meant to grow in the soil. So we are in this world. We have to manifest in this world to be able to grow. But also there's going to time when we diminish, when we perish, just like the seed. Flowers don't last forever. They're seasonal. And they diminish, but when the season changes, it comes back, they come back. Or like tree, a leaves on a tree. The tree doesn't dissolve. The tree is foundational. The leaves come and go. Mm. But the tree is still there. And mm. whether you see that or not, you don't even see the root of the things that are causing the branch to grow. It's under the ground. It's hidden from us. Mm. And it's meant to be so. You can't see the things that are causing the sustenance, causing it to cultivate where it's getting its water from. All you see the things is above the ground. So our lives, uh, my name is Ari Eel. Ari, A-R-I, in Egyptian, means actions, basically. Mm. It's about what you do in your life, you know. And yield is basically a... a Owe to Yahweh, the God. 
So the actions of God. Mm. So if you do things that are contrary to that, imagine the punishment, quote unquote, that you're going to get. If man has a law that you're beholden to, you run the traffic lights, you run the stoplight, you know, different common laws, social laws. Imagine what God's law would be if there is a God, so to speak, and it's been said divinely. If you break man's laws, you need to be punished, or if there is some retribution. Imagine what you're going to have to do if you break a moral divine law. It's coming to you. And it's not going to change. It's not transactional. It's not situational. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. So mm-hmm. and relative to Quran 8, I, I feel like in my past life, I've done some things where I haven't evolved enough or I was the type of person when I came into this world with certain characteristics and traits where it would allow me to be aggressive, demonstrative, or even disrespectful of other people, which led me to take in two people's lives mm-hmm. and have me to suffer this so that I could evolve now. Okay, so you wouldn't evolve in that life. You wouldn't, okay, we're going to give you a greater test that's going to force you into that. So I see adversity as prosperity. It's a gift. And you said it's like a reward. Absolutely. Hmm. But I had to reach that point to come to understand why do people go through adversity? It's meant to change it. They say what well, you don't what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, you gotta adapt and overcome, you know, or you have to do it again. Hmm. Or and again. Yeah. Okay, or and again. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm trying this. Okay, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> like so hmm. you, know, you evolve, you move forward. So absolutely I believe in reincarnation. Mm-hmm. And I can see it as a gift, as a reward. Like, what? You did 37 years in prison? You think that's a reward? Never mind. You got a long way to go to understand where I'm at with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I have, I have a, yeah, yeah. I see it also that, that life gives us lessons. And if, if we don't learn them, we will get it repeated. And, yeah. if, and every time stronger and stronger and stronger until we really get it, get the message. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's cyclical. It's going to come back around. It's going to come back around. It's going to come back around. Yeah. If, if we answer the question the right way or we learn the lesson, as you said, then the next time it comes back around, I'll just go to that. Oh, we got that. That's not uh, we, it, we don't even know it no more. We got we respond the way the lesson that we learned. That's how we answer and go on by. But to the extent that we don't learn the lesson, then be, it becomes like a cog in the wheel. We get stuck on it, stuck on it. Mm. Mm. But once we take the cog out, it flows smoothly on by. The wheel keeps turning. The wheel keeps turning. But there's going to come something behind it. There's another lesson. Oh, you got that one? What about this one? So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't stop. Yeah, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. I, it, that's also my, my, my insight. Meanwhile, there is not, there's not the plateau, you know, where you are now, like, you know, the, you know, the fully enlightenment uh, and then that's, that's it. It's not, that's not, not like yeah. that. It always goes on. Not and that's the destination. The, so yeah. Speak. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty, you know, it's always evolving. It's an ever yes, evolving beautiness or Yes, yeah, sir. or or whatever, or or. I believe that. Yeah. I believe in this world. We're always. You have one minute remaining. It's a journey, always in this mm-hmm. world, in yeah. the spirit world, where we come from. Is the way we when we learn the lessons in this world, then we can stay in the other world. But that's another story. We'll get to. It. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to that one. Yeah. All right, Ariel. So thank you also for explaining your name. I always was was wondering what what what's the meaning of your name. Um, and yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people say Ariel is the line of God or called out by God. But yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. beautiful. We'll talk more about it. We will talk more and about I it. I will call back Sunday at two. Yeah. Have a good time and thank you so much for, for doing this. I'm gonna do it. And thank you as well, Constant. Have a good time. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate everything, man. And I will continue to do so. Yeah, me too. Bye bye. Yes, sir. All, All right. right. Bye. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thank you for using GTL. So that was my call, a long call, 30, 45 minutes today. And um, yeah, very, very, very intense. I, I have to listen to this, this recording myself again, because there was so much information from Ariel and um, I, I, have to, I have to process that. 
and that's always the way when the, the, this way when we call when we talk and so i'm very happy that, that i have now set up the technique to record it um, and ariel is is agreed to the recording so and as always dear friends please help us support us support ariel you see he's a beautiful man and he really deserves it now to have a life and freedom and contribute something that is meaningful to our society and you see that he's already on the right way he's doing this he, he did now the certification he's a certified coach now and um, so please support us there is a possibility to send money um, via the Go GoFundMe account that you find below and um, please but the I think even it's the same importance is to spread this, to create this channel, to make it bigger. And I know there was a long time now nothing on the channel, but I will, we will now try to regularly have the call and regularly spread that out so that we finally will create a book. That's the idea. Um, we have a, we will have a book and um, we, will so not we but especially ariel will have a book so we will try to help him support him in that and so we can share and participate all on his, on his wisdom and on, on his experience and on his story all right thank you very much dear friends and yeah take care mm -hmm.